In this video, we got a cluster from Thomas. Now he wants me to go ahead and put in the upgraded X27 stepper motors, but he also wants me to fix the intermittent power problem. Uh, I think the story on this one was the cluster was working okay. Uh, he installed blue LEDs and after he installed the LEDs, it was being erratic and inconsistent. And uh, I caught it in one of its not booting up modes. And I think what I'm uh, suspecting is the microprocessor is not, it's not booting, it's not starting. And uh, I know that because it's not turning on the five volts for the stepper motor driver chips. Uh, this voltage regulator has a, uh, a, a switched output. It has two five volt outputs that are consistent. Uh, they're always on whether the ignition's on or not. And those are the outside pins here. So we have five volts continuous. I also verified that we're seeing both switched and ignition power at least come into the board. So we know it has both battery and ignition, but it's still not booting. I also just verified that, you know, we have a healthy 12 volts going into the voltage regulator. Now keep in mind when you're pinning this while it's live, don't accidentally uh, slip and let your meter probe go in between the pins because then you'll force 12 volts into the 5 volt rail and it won't like that very much. So basically where I'm at, I verified that the microprocessor is getting five volts. I'm getting it right at this uh, output of the filter here that goes into the BCC of the microprocessor. So it has power. It's being told to turn on, but it's not booting up. And I know that because of pin six, that's the switch. When pin six goes low, it turns on the five volts for the stepper motor circuit. And it's, it's high right now, which means off. So that tells me that the microprocessor isn't talking to the voltage regulator and telling it to turn on. Also, there's no other activity at all. So uh, what I think happened is maybe it's, it's winter time, the air is dry. Uh, this microprocessor is probably gonna be static sensitive and just simply standing up from a chair is enough uh, static charge build up to, to uh, blow one of these guys out to act it up. So. I'm going to be pulling one off of a donor board. This donor board has a blown up uh, switching power supply for the uh, vacuum fluorescent display. I already tried saving this board, but it has some further damage. And uh, this is going to be the donor board. So I'll be pulling the processor off of this and attempting to put it on uh, this good board and see if we can get this thing to boot.
right, got the microprocessor transplanted. Gave it a few minutes to cool off. Let's see if it will now boot. All right, so we're back to life. And uh, of course, since the still the board still has the original EEPROM, so his mileage is still uh, still there. Uh, I do notice though that this is a single trip um, option. It doesn't have the business and personal. So this microprocessor probably came out of a base model cluster, so I'll have to make sure that um, that'll be compatible with his trucks. It might not have steering wheel controls, but uh, at least it's back to life. I will figure out the compatibility later, but uh, I'm going to go ahead with the rebuild, finish replacing the stepper motors, and uh, put it back together and clean it up. So that wraps up this repair. Hopefully uh, you will uh, learn from this that there are some static sensitive components on this. So if you're doing your own repairs, um, like installing LEDs and whatnot, handle the board with uh, care, with ESD care. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, there's more than one program on the microprocessors, depending on the trim of the vehicle. And uh, there's also more than one problem that can cause a power loss or the cluster to not turn on or boot. So don't just assume if yours isn't turning on, that it needs a new chip. It could be many other things that do require some troubleshooting to figure out. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.